Okay, in this video we're going to talk a little bit more about how to solve linear equations. This time we're going to add a couple of complications. We're going to add decimals and we're going to add fractions into the mix. We'll also solve a couple of linear equations that are just a bit harder than the ones that we did in the previous video. Now speaking of that previous video, we came up with this list of steps for solving linear equations. I want to reiterate that these are just linear equations, which means you're going to have a variable in this equation. Most likely it's going to be x. But that variable, that x, should only have a first power on it. In other words, we're not going to be able to solve any equations that have anything like a square root of x in there, or an x squared, or an x cubed, or even a 1 over x, because te technically a 1 over x has an x to the negative 1 power on it. If you see any of those in these equations, it's not linear, and we won't be able to solve these just yet. One more thing before we start solving these equations, I gave you these steps in one of the previous videos. I feel like there should be an amendment to this first one. I feel like somewhere in one of these steps we should say that you need to combine like terms. Okay, without further ado, let's get to solving some of these equations. Let's solve this one right here. Now the first step in our list says we have to get rid of parentheses. I'm going to copy down the left side. I'm going to distribute the 2 through these parentheses. At this point I'm going to combine like terms. We don't have any like terms on the left side. The 2 plus 2, those are like terms that we can combine on the right side. Now the next step is we need to get all of the terms that have the variable on one side of the equation and all the terms that don't have the variable on the other side of the equation. I'm going to do that in two steps. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That gets all of the terms with x on them on the left side of the equation. And now to get everything that doesn't have a variable in it, on the right side, I'm going to add 6. The third step on our list was to isolate the variable by dividing. There's a 3 multiplying this x, so we have to divide by 3 on both sides, of course. And we've got an x by itself, and in this case, the answer is a fraction. It's 10 thirds. Now, I'm not sure if your instructor is going to ask you to check your answer if it turns out to be a fraction. It's never a bad idea. If you happen to have a calculator with you at home, you could do it using a calculator. Just take that x and plug it in there and there and make sure the left side and right side are equal. Now you could also do this by hand, it just might take a little bit of time. Okay, let's move on and try to solve this equation. I'm still going to do my first step here. You can see that there are fractions in this actual problem, but I'm still going to go ahead and do my first step. I'm going to get rid of my parentheses. And if we had like terms on the left side or the right side of the equation, I would go ahead and do that as well. Now there are actually two different ways we can proceed at this point. One, we could just go about our business and bring all the terms without a t to one side of the equation and all the terms with a t to the other side of the equation. But then notice you're going to be adding and subtracting fractions. That's perfectly fine, but there's a way that you can make your life just a little bit easier by getting rid of the fractions in the first place. Take a look at all the fractions in this problem. You have a one-third, a one-sixth, and a one-fourth. The question is, what would the common denominator be if you had those three fractions saying you wanted to add them all together? Well, you've had experience with this in the past. It turns out that the common denominator here would actually be 12. We can use that common denominator, that 12, to actually get rid of all the fractions in this problem. The way we can do that is we can multiply both sides of the equation by 12. I'll do it slowly in two steps. Notice what happens. Of course, we're thinking of this 12 as 12 over 1. So when we multiply these through the parentheses, 12 is multiplying the numerator everywhere. And below is what you get. But you'll notice that all of our fractions simplify at this point. 12 thirds is the same thing as 4. 12 divided by 6 is the same thing as 2. 12 divided by 4 is the same thing as 3. So now we have a basic equation that doesn't have any fractions in it. And it's something that at this point is much easier to solve. Let's do it. I'm going to add 12t to both sides of this equation. And I'm going to add 2 to both sides of this equation. Again, we have to divide to isolate the variable t. And I'm getting t is negative 1 over 16. Again, that's going to be pretty tough to check by hand. It's possible to do it. Um, if you happen to have a calculator and you're doing this as homework, go ahead and check it on your calculator. Or do whatever your instructor asks you to do. Just a little bit of vocabulary. We found that the common denominator of all of our fractions in this problem was 12. So we multiplied by that 12 to do what we call clearing the fractions. And that means we just get rid of all the fractions. Up here in this problem, we had fractions. Right down here, we no longer had fractions. So we cleared them out. Okay, so that's a nice way to solve a linear equation that has fractions in it. Let's take a look at a linear equation that has decimals. Again, if this problem had parentheses, you'd want to multiply through to get rid of the parentheses. But now we're looking at this and we see decimals and we don't necessarily want to have to deal with decimals. You certainly could if you wanted to, but it's going to be easier if we can clear the decimals in a way that's similar to clearing the fractions from the last problem. 
what can we do to get rid of decimals? Well, as it turns out, what we can do is we can multiply by a factor of 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. We can multiply by whatever factor of 10 we can to get rid of the decimals in the problem. So you'll notice in this case, by multiplying by 100, we get rid of every decimal in the problem. I'll show you why. When we multiply by 100, we move the decimal two places to the right. So we end up getting 25x instead of 0.25x. We move the decimal two places to the right and you end up getting 140 instead of 1.4. Keep moving the decimal two places to the right and you get 12x. And one more time, this decimal is after the three, so you move it two places to the right and you actually get the number 300. And now we've cleared the decimals and we have a problem that is actually not too hard to solve. We go about our business. We get all of the terms with x in them to one side of the equation. In this case, I'm gonna subtract by 12x. And then we get all of the terms that don't have x's in them to the other side of the equation, in this, in this case, by subtracting by 140. Then we want to isolate our variable, in this case by dividing by 13. And now we've got x by itself. It's a really big, crazy looking fraction. It's negative 440 over 13. Now if we could reduce that, we would. Um, 13 is a prime number, so I don't actually think we can reduce this fraction. So I'm going to box it up and call that the answer. Again, it's always a good idea to check. I wouldn't want to have to check this problem by hand, so uh, maybe you could just use a calculator to check it. Or better yet, just check your work to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Now we've done a problem where we cleared fractions, and we did a problem where we cleared decimals. See if you can do it on your own. Here's the video quiz. Solve these two equations, and please uh, clear the fractions on equation one, and on problem two, clear the decimals. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video.